So number 10 then from paper one of the 2021 National 5 resource paper, four mark question this time. Here's a graph with a line in it, but notice it's not the normal Y and X. So this refers to this little story. That W is actually a wage. And that S is the amounts of sales made because the wage depends on a basic amount. That would be this amount here when there's no sales and the amount of sales. So it gives you some information. So don't get them mixed up. Point A represents a sales. So I'll put it down this way using the same convention of X, Y. So sales would have been the X. So that's the 6,000. And the wage, which would be the Y, is the second one I'll put down, is 450. Point B. Sales again. So that's the, like the X. That's the 7,200. And the 510, that's the wage. That's the Y. So what does it say? Find the equation of this line in terms of W and S. Now, it doesn't tell you how to express it because there's various ways you could write down the equation of a line. So the basic form for the equation of a line would be either, which is the best one, MX plus C, because there's only two constants in it. That's important for simultaneous equations. Or AX plus BY, either plus C equals zero or equals C, where well, that C will be different from that one. Or that form of it which isn't so good for simultaneous equations because you've got three unknowns. If you try to use these two points in this as simultaneous equations, you'd end up with what's called a redundancy. Well, you can choose any value you like for one of the variables and the other two are related to that. So you get sets of answers. But you're not going to do that anyway, not at this level. So I'm not going to bother with simultaneous equations. You could use simultaneous equations here because there's only two unknowns and you've got two sets of information, so you could create two equations and two unknowns and find it that way. But I'm not going to put that down either because it's unlikely you'll have done that. The best way is just to use this form of the equation. So for three marks, what's the equation of this line? So in other words, I'm going for this. I'm going for not y equals mx plus c. I'm going for w equals ms plus c where C is where it cuts the vertical axis and M is going to be the gradient. So find that gradient. Well, the gradient is the difference up the way divided by the difference along the way. It's up over along. So I'm not going to be putting Y2 minus Y1 and X2 minus X1. You could put W2 minus W1, but I think I'll just put up over along. Since that's variable neutral. <laughs> right, up over along. So, taking the further away point. So that's 510 take away 450 over 7200 take away 6000. So that becomes 60 over 1200. But you'll have to cancel this down though. Well, you get a mark for doing that. Why have you not got to have that cancelled down? I don't know, because you would cancel it down, wouldn't you? So that's a 20th. The gradient's a 20th. Now, you could either feed it into this equation, or you could use that other one, that finder equation, which is really just the gradient formula, rearranged. So you can either use this to do it, or you could use the y minus b equals mx minus a. Just put the inverted commas, because it's not actually y's and x's you've got, it's w's and s's. So you could use that, which is, of course, just a gradient formula. Take this across and divide, and you've got m equals difference in y's over difference in x's. So there's two ways you could do this. You can either use this one or this one. Well, I've written that one first, so I'll do that first. So you could either, know that you know the gradient, you can put it in here and choose one of these points. I'll choose a because it's got simpler numbers. So that would say a. What would be the y coordinate? That's the w. I should really put down what I'm trying to find here. This is me going for it in the form of W equals MS plus C. So I'll have 450 equals a 20th of 6,000 plus C. So there's only C to find here. 
So a twentieth of that, that knocks out a zero, is 300. And if you take the 300 across, I'll just write it backwards. So that's 450 minus this, which is 300, which means C is equal to 150. In fact, just for substituting it in there, you didn't have to find that. Just substitute it in there, but I've got you the mark. But now you can put it together. So here's the formula. W equals 1 twentieth of S plus 150. There's the mark. Then the alternative would have been to use this, which may have been the one you went for first of all. We have dropped that wee bit out, but it's not Y and X, so I'd have to write W minus B equals M S minus A. I have to knock that out. Using the same point A, so you've got W minus the W coordinate is the gradient, 1 20th, times S minus the S coordinate. So take that across and multiply. Well, no, I'm not going to take it across and multiply because I'm just going to leave it over here. Normally you would do that, but that goes in nicely, so I'll just leave it in this form. So that'll be a 20th of S. A 20th of that was that 300. So that'll be minus the 300, but plus the 450, so it's back to plus the 150 again. So this time the mark would be for substituting it into that form. And the last mark would be for getting the same result. OK, I have no idea why I'm writing this down again. Must have been distracted by something. Now, part B, I'll just put it here, just so I can leave that all lying there. Calculate the wage. So that's the form you've got it in. You've got it in the form of calculating W when the sales are a 1,000. Well, in that case, W would be, you're just putting it into the formula, a 20th of a 1,000 plus the 150. That goes in, that looks out the zero, so that's 50 and 150, so that's 200. Put 200 down. I'll just have to check the question if that's just a number or a number of pounds. So it does say W pounds. So W is just a number, so I don't need to put a pound sign in front of it. I think if you put a pound sign in front of it, it'd make no difference anywhere. You'd still get the mark for the 200. So number 11 then, three marks here, solve this inequation for the three marks, solve algebraically, so that just means don't just guess numbers that might work. Well, one thing that's going to happen here is we're all going to end up backwards, because usually when you solve an equation or an equation, you want the x on the left and the numbers on the right. Now if I was just to proceed with this, well the first thing I'd do is I'd split that up. So it's one take away the x and it's also take away the four. Now, doing that's worth a mark. Now, if I was to put the x's with the x's, there's two ways you could do it now. You could either bring the x over here and then just solve it backwards, and they'll give you the marks if you do that. Or you could bring it over here, bring the x's over here and the numbers over here, and then it'll be full of negatives. So there's two ways you could proceed. I'd still be tempted. I would have sorted something out at the beginning to do it the other way around, so I'll take that negative that 2x over as a negative 2x, leave that there, bring that 4 over as a plus 4, and that 1 over as a minus 1. Then I've got negative 3x is greater than 3. Now getting to that line is worth a mark, and then finishing it off, now you're going to divide by a negative 3. It's okay swapping sides, that makes no difference to the sign. So if you're adding or subtracting something to two sides of an inequation, it won't change the nature of the inequation. But if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequation by a negative number, it'll flip that sign. So when you take that negative 3 across and divide, which means you're dividing both sides by negative 3, it flips the sign. And then it'll be 3 divided by negative 3, so x is less than negative 1. The alternative would have been, at this point here, once you've multiplied it out, I mean this point here, once you've multiplied it out, you could just leave the x's where they were. So you could have gone from here to, I'll leave the numbers here, so you've got 1 minus 4 is greater than 2x, but 
plus x. So negative 3 is greater than 3x, and then divide both sides, so negative 1 is greater than x. And if you do that, they're actually giving you the mark. So you'd end up with that, and then you'd end up with that. But normally at that point, you would just read it the other way around. Reading that backwards would just be x. Remember, x is at the pointy end, at the small end of that wedge. So x is less than negative 1, reading it backwards. But they're giving you the mark there. I'll still put it here. Yeah. One way around that would be to realise that at the beginning it's all going to end up backwards. And so instead of writing that down, you could just have written it down looking at it the other way. 2x at the pointy end. So less than reading it backwards. 1 minus, just copy this side down, x plus 4. Then it all works out nicely, because then you've just got 2x is less than 1, take away the 4, take away the x, take away the 4, that was the first mark. Bring that across, 3x is less than the negative 3, that would have been the second one. Divide by the 3, so that won't change anything, x is less than negative 1, there's the final mark. So number 12 then, I've just a little bit of arithmetic for the three marks here. It's that reverse sort of percentage question. You're not told the full amount, you're only told part of it, and then you have to work your way back to the full amount. So a band sold 2,400 tickets in Edinburgh, but that was only 75% of the tickets sold in Glasgow, so you have to find the amount in Glasgow, which is a bigger amount. Well, the first bit would be just to identify what's happening. Now, there's no, you could write down number in Glasgow, or you could just introduce a variable, like, let n be the number of tickets sold in Glasgow. Right, and once I've identified that n, I can now state the question. So 75%, a wee bit squinty there, 75% of n is 2,400. Well, that's the first mark, just for stating the question. So now it's just up to you, how are you going to deal with that 75? That's 75%. Well, if you were using a calculator, you would change that to a decimal. So you'd have 0.75 times n and divide by it. If you're not using a calculator, you could still do that, but that's more fiddly. It'd be better to take that as a fraction. So you've got two choices. You can either leave it as a percentage and then compare it to some related percentage, some smaller one that can build up to 100, find a stepping stone. Well, 10's no use, but 25 would do. So one way would be, Go from 75 to 25, and then from 25 to 100, that would work. I'll just do that since I've said it. So from 75, you could find 25% just by dividing by 3. So dividing that by 3 is easy, that's 800. And then you could go up to the whole lot, that's 100%. So that means the whole of n, or you could just say n. Boom, put in a wee bracket. So n's going to be, and of course that means I'm going to have four of those, so that'll be, that was tight, divided. So it'll be times four, so 3,200. So one mark was for the technique you were going to employ to get from this to the final answer, and the other mark was for the final answer. So nothing really to this question. Another option would have been at this stage here just to reinterpret 75 as 3 quarters and just put 3 quarters of n is 2,400. So that's using the fraction method, the common fraction. So that means that taking that across it would be 4 upon 3 times 2,400. In which case, you same again, you're going to divide by the 3, which is 800, multiply by the 4, 3,200. It wasn't happening, that was the original one. So those would have been the marks. It's really just up to you. Or you could go for the decimal form, the way you would do it in a calculator. 0.75n is 2,400, which means that n would be divided by that 0.75. And of course, if you're using a calculator, you wouldn't bother about how to divide by 0.75, you just press the buttons. But here you do, because you haven't got a calculator. So this is going to be the worst of the methods, because to divide by a decimal, you should really change it into divide by a whole number. So move the point two places, that's times 100. That turns that into 75. So I'll have to move this point two places to keep it the same size. Multiply that by 100. So it'll be 24 and four zeros. 
Now you could either then say, how many 75s go into this? Well, well, you could do 75 into 240, first of all, it'd be three of them, but you're not going to do that because that's just, that's just so much better off with these. You'd probably try and cancel it down, first of all. So you'd probably say something like, well, well I can divide them both by three. Three into that is 25, and three into that would be eight, and I've still got the four zeros. Now, 25 into this, well, 25 is quite an easy number to divide by if you've got hundreds, because there are four 25s in every hundred. So to divide by 25, basically you would divide by 100 and multiply by 4, because there's 4 in every 100. So I would knock off that 100, divide by 100, and multiply by 4, because there's 4 in every 100. So it's 4 times that, which of course is the same answer. So N is that 3,200. So here, that would have been the interpretation of it that you'd have worked with, but you wouldn't have done it this way.